Karem Whip has 100 million shillings for his guards. The Prime Minister has 800 million shillings for his guards. The President himself, who said we should not provide money, has put 2.5 billion for his guards. I don't know whether this government speaks to itself. One person says this, another does the other. Honorable members, as I told you, all these reports are informative. They are informative. Where you cannot make any changes, they will inform us on what to do in the next five years. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And uh, the Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi. I begin with uh, 9.0, President's Office, vote 001. <laughs> Madam Speaker and Honorable Members, the Constitution under Article 98 creates the President and provides for his whole, whole high election in Article 103. Article 99 of the Constitution states that the President shall safeguard this Constitution and promote the welfare of citizens. The President under the Constitution works or is supposed to work for the sole purpose of promoting the welfare of citizens, not himself or his family. In the proposed budget for the financial year 2023-2024, vote 001 office of the president has been allocated provided 239 billion shillings. of course this figure changes if you look at the second agenda. this money is to facilitate the president to work as the constitution mandates, mandates him to promote the welfare of citizens I have provided that figure for you to see what that money will do the first uh, item on the table, official ceremonies and functions, 43.7 billion shillings. You can read the table by yourself. I propose that we reduce this budget under President's office by 82 billion shillings. Why? This money for ceremonies and classified expenditure is a candidate for reallocation. How on earth? Can we provide for 43 billion shillings for ceremonies when the road network in the capital city has broken down? The money for ceremonies should be spent on repairing roads in Kampala and Wakiso. In Tanzania, for your information, late President Magufuli, the only activity he undertook, he undertook on the independence of Tanzania was a speech, and he said the money should be used to do roads in Dar es Salaam. I go to vote 002 State House. The total budget for the residence of the president in this budget before the second call agenda was 417.9 billion. This means that every day the president and his family, because they are the ones staying in the state house, they spend 1.1 billion. They spend 47.7 million per hour and uh, <coughs> 795,000 per minute. <laughs> to put it even more clearly, for every two minutes, you can count now, every two minutes, they are spending 1.5 million, every two minutes. This parliament will be in breach of the constitution. If it passes a budget that allows the president to illegally swim in a luxury at the expense of the citizens' welfare, the, president, the Presidential Emoluments and Benefits Act 1998 provides the salary, allowances, and benefits to the president. When budgeting for the president and his family, this law applies. Unfortunately, the there's previous an order, parliament... There's an order from Cecilia. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, the member holding the floor 
is talking about the expenditure for a family, the president and his wife. The information we have officially is that the president uh, receives only 3.6 million salary per month. Now, is the member in order to impute that the president is spending all these billions when actually the president only receives officially 3.6 million shillings per month? Is the member in order? Honourable Member. Honourable Member. Office of the President, a vote is a statutory vote. And the money that is just like Parliament, money that is allocated there, can only be discussed by a specific committee. Statutory. Just like you don't discuss about your vote of parliament. But let Honorable Semuju continue. Madam Speaker, the Presidential Emoluments and Benefits Act 1998, I am on page 32. Allowances and other benefits to the president. When budgeting for the president and his family, this law applies. Unfortunately, the previous parliaments have not guided themselves on what the president and his family is or are entitled to regard. I have for that purpose, <clears throat> right honorable speaker and honorable members, attached a schedule of what the benefits of the president and his family are. And you can straight go to that table. The point the Honorable Cecilia Ogwal makes, the side of the president in first schedule in that law remains 3.6. The list is long. I may not have to go into the whole list. But please take note that anything that you give to the president and his family, either in excess or below what the law provides, is illegal. Because the makers of the law knew that there will be president and the family. That's why they are providing even for his children, for education, for a trip outside. Do not be tempted to provide beyond. In the future, you are going to be arrested for the money that you are just uh, splashing. <laughs> so that schedule is schedule, schedule one in the presidential and uh, <clears throat> Emoluments and Benefits Act. I don't have to read it. I now want to draw your attention, Madam Speaker and the House, to the budget that has been provided for the President and his family and for you to compare whether it complies with the Presidential Emoluments and Benefits Act. Details are on the table be be that follows. <clears throat> for a quick reference, donations, 137 billion shillings. Classified expenditure, including money for Wawogo, 120 billion. <clears throat> Travel abroad. It's an order. Eddie? Has he finished his mamat problems? Eh. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I take cognizance that this house is a very serious house. Honorable Members, is free sitting. I can see. You don't have to, to stand like you're looking after cows. Kakumi, remove this side. 
Yes. Right on about speaker, I rise on the point of order, and I want to state for the record that is obvious to us that this is a very serious house. This is a national assembly, parliament of Uganda, where whether you sneeze, whatever you say here is captured on the record for generations to come. I actually say it is obvious. And it's restating the member, obvious stop is for Listen to, to emphasis. The member. If you know it, probably I knew it before you do. Is it in order for us to debate in this house? We are considering a national budget to drag in names of individuals who are Honorable it's members, listen. Right, Honorable Speaker, we either debate logically or we go illogically. Is it in order for us to start bringing in the names of people that are not in this house to defend themselves? Honorable, honorable members. Honorable O, -O. Honorable both in the report it's indicated that Mr. Robogo appeared before the committee. And if he appeared before the committee, the only thing that I don't see in the budget is a company showing Robogo. It is not indicated. But if he appeared in the committee, I cannot stop anybody from mentioning a person who appeared in the committee. But the figure, the figure that is, the figure that they are saying was given to Rabogo is not what I am seeing here. And I don't see the name of Rabogo in the, in the report. Maybe I hear from the chair. Right, Honorable, right, Honorable Speaker and members. The person, Ravogo, appeared to the committee to give a committee some insight on export promotion. He had a team, and they had a number of products they were trying to give us the vision if we invested in value, value addition, would earn a lot of income. One of them was coffee, there was a fish, there was a beef, milk. So they gave just that insight to the committee and we received the information. However, however, as far as these estimates are concerned, there is nothing allocated to what Rabogo spoke about. Information. Yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Chair, for giving way. Right Honorable Speaker, uh, appearing before the committee is not a crime. And right honorable speaker, we have interfaced with many people, with many agencies, headed by people whose names also could be mentioned. Uh, picking one person's name is really demonizing the process of promoting, promoting the exports in Uganda. James? Yes, Madam Speaker. I have said if Ravog appeared before the committee, it has no problem. Yeah. Me, what I don't see, I don't see an allocation from Ravog. Exactly. So the information I wanted to relate to my chair is that... Uh, is that uh, and if you're talking about vote two, President's office, is it vote? State House? Talk about State House. So thank you, Madam Speaker. I think it is Madam, nice. let's Madam, debate, please. Let's debate let's thank talk, you. Let's talk about State House. Madam Speaker, can you summarize? Members, can I you summarize? On, I am finishing. There are things that happen in a committee that we don't want to bring here. For example, when Nwawogo came to Munyunyu, Honorable Kaberuka was almost kneeling down to greet him. This one here. Now, can we stop that? Is that what we are supplying today?
and we don't want to say those things. That's why I want to concentrate on the report. Honorable, Madam Honorable Speaker, Samuju, the law provides for... Let's, <coughs> let it be substance over form. Yeah, I agree, Madam I, Speaker. I need some substance from you. Madam Speaker, I have provided a table. You see the... And I want to invite members of parliament. I, I read what is in your document. That's what I'm reading, Madam. Read Speaker. what is in the document. I want to invite uh, members of parliament to begin looking at the voluminous revenue estimate. The one I can has a copy. There are two voluminous. Before you pass figures, you need to look at the details. That's why some people are uncomfortable when you begin mentioning names, because they are used to just a small report. Go to these voluminous books and read them. Madam Speaker, I have provided a, a, a table there. The law provides for one residence. You can see this is one volume. They are about four. If you don't read them when you are debating budget, keep quiet. <laughs> Madam Speaker, <clears throat> the law provides for one residence, state house. The president operates two residences. Go back to the law on presidential emoluments and benefits act. It provides for one residence to the president. Where, 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 which residences are those? Uh, you have told me to read the report. Can I read the madam? <laughs> the president operates two residences at Nakasero and Entebbe illegally. That's why his electricity bill at 500 million and water bill at 500 million per year is bigger than a big factory like roofings. Whatever they are manufacturing at State House, Allah knows. Honorable members, I would like to draw your attention to other items to be funded under State House. There is 550 million shilling to buy clothes. The same amount was provided Can last you, year. This means the we are spending he's on average. Reading. I am reading the he's report. He is reading the report. Honorable Minister, sit down. The same amount was provided last year. This means. We are spending on average one million shilling on President Cross on President President Museveni's clothes every day. Our president is not a staff from Hollywood, requiring to change wardrobe every day. He's the president of a poor country. Why buy him clothes worth 350 million every year? What happened to the clothes that we bought last year? We are providing 600 million shilling for furniture. We provided the same amount last year. This residence <coughs> has one member. You will have, have time to debate that report. We are providing 600 million shillings for furniture. The same amount was provided last year. This residence has won itself a place in the history of Uganda. The beds in the public health facilities are not there. But the president is buying clothes and furniture every year. We are providing 7.8 billion for agriculture supplies. We are also providing another 184 billion for veterinary services. Did the president turn state house into a farm without the knowledge of the country? Parliament must be sure that we are not, pro we are not the ones providing funding for President William Seven's private farms in Chisos and Ruakitura. To make matters worse, he has provided himself with 120 billion shillings for classified expenditure at his residence. That we have spoken about earlier, I can skip. The president has a duty not to abuse the state house. But if he chooses to do so, this parliament is an obligation to stop him. President M7 despised the former president, Rukongo uh, Abinais, for turning state house into what he called the clearing house. He has now surpassed him. In fact, Mr. M7 has turned state house into an enterprise for himself and his family. Remember, 4002, which is state house, started around 1997 with just about 12 billion shillings. Last year, it hit a trillion. State House budget was, last year, the money we appropriated here, 682 billion. Another 150 billion has been pro provided in the classified, I mean, in the supplementary expenditure. The budget on donations, 137 billion under State House, falls under what the President called cheap priority in his April 3rd, 2023 20, letter to Prime Minister Honorable Nabanja and copied to all MPs. He said distribution of items such as iron sheet is cheap priority. Under NRA code, it is subversive. 
It therefore violates the NRA code and is classified as subversive in his letter. The NRA should tell Parliament why it has not arrested its officer ARA 001 Genome 7 for distribution of khaki brown envelopes in search, in search of cheap popularity. Genome 7 should be court martialed, in fact. I therefore propose that the President and his family are given only 12 of 1 billion shilling and a state house for their welfare. The extra 400 billion should be used to fund priorities in the health sector. You need to go to Murago. They get water in the night. By midday, is that in the report? I am illustrating. Go to the report. <laughs> Madam Speaker, go to the next vote. The money meant for luxury and the State House should be used to fund the priorities in the health sector that have not been provided for. The funding gap is at 700 billion shillings. That's what our committee was able to provide. Office of the Prime Minister. This office has been allocated 221, 22 billion. The Prime Minister, according to Article 101A of the Constitution, is charged with the following responsibility. Shall be the leader of government business in Parliament and be responsible for the coordination and implementation of government policies across ministries, departments, and public institutions. The Prime Minister is therefore at the heart of running the state. This Parliament is aware that the current Prime Minister, right now she's in hiding in Kakumiro, remains a suspect in the case of disappearing of iron sheets meant for Karamoji. Not only did she fail to coordinate and implement the distribution of iron sheets to Karamoji, but she personally took 3,000 iron sheets. Her deputies, Honorable Rebecca Kadaga and Honorable Kiki Nakadama, also shared. I would like to remind this parliament that money for Karamoji iron sheets and got 339 billion shilling was passed by this parliament in a supplementary request. <clears throat> I would like, uh, I ca it, ca it cannot be the same parliament now placing a whole 222 billion shilling in the hands of those who have feasted on the 39. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, you owe it to the country. The colleagues involved in this case have demonstrated their ability to supervise public funds. The President wrote to the Prime Minister and copied that letter to all of us. He accused his own ministers of theft and subversion. He actually promised action. I therefore propose that the budget for the office of the Prime Minister, save for the salaries of staff, be withheld until the President has taken his promised political action. There is no way this Parliament will place money in the hands of suspects who are hiding. They are not even sitting in office. And I, below, I reproduce what is already in the letter that each one of you has. Moreover, there was even a proposal from the accounting officer of that department, late Keith Mwakaniz, that this department must be restructured immediately. One of members, I would like to remind you that the two ministers for Karamoji, the Honorable Kitutu and her deputy have already been charged and have slept in Ruzira. That ministry is at the moment without a minister or a deputy because the two were just granted temporary freedom to go to hospital and to visit law chambers. On page 67 of the estimates of revenue and expenditure, 4.7 billion has been provided for this Ministry of Karamoja Affairs and uh, budget output, uh, that number. This parliament should not send money to a ministry that at the moment is crumbling. Our money should not crumble with the ministry. I invite parliament to look at section 11G of the Public Finance and Management Act. In the case of civil servants, the law does not allow anyone to be appointed an accounting officer if he has accountability issues. It states, an appointee or a designated accounting officer in accordance with this act, except that the secretary to the treasurer shall not appoint a designated or designate a person, an accounting officer, where, according to the report of an internal auditor, auditor general, or the auditor general, that person has, has not accounted for the public resources or assets of the vote for a financial year. This parliament should apply the same and similar standards when it comes to public resources. A, a minister, prime minister, who has issues of accountability, must not be allowed anywhere near public resources. <coughs> As I finish, uh, Madam Speaker, the final one. This office of whips is the creation of the Administration of Parliament Act and our rules of procedure. There are seven political parties in this parliament, all of them with whips. In the budget 
of the Office of Prime Minister, there is 2 billion shilling for the exclusive use of the NRM whip. He's being provided with 800 million shilling for donation, 150 million to maintain his cars, 100 million to fuel his cars, 815 million for inland travels, 100 for security and guards, 130 million shilling for special drinks and meals. This is not the only whip in this parliament. The opposition whip is here, and other whips are not provided with these facilities. Yet they are doing the same thing under the law. I am inviting Parliament to withhold the approval of this money. Finally, the President, while speaking at the nuclear mass of our late colleagues, he said we should not be providing money for guards because we turn them into mercenaries. What therefore should follow is the removal of any money for guards in the budget. You can see I have provided information here. The NRM whip has 100 million shillings for his guards. The Prime Minister has 800 million shillings for his guards. The President himself who said we should not provide money has put 2.5 billion for his guards. I don't know whether this government speaks to itself. One person says this, another does the other. Madam Speaker, and honourable members, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, thank you so much. <coughs> thank you so much, Honourable Semuju and Honourable Chivombi and the Chair.